Hey, my friends, thank you so much for tuning into this broadcast tonight. Now, for those of you that are logging on, I'm going to ask you to do me a couple of favors. And as always, go ahead in the comments below, whether it be on Facebook or on YouTube, in the comments below, let us know where you are watching from just by simply typing in your city and state. And then also, secondly, if you can go ahead on Facebook, especially if you can go ahead and share this broadcast with the people that you are connected with on social media. And if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and like this video because those two things, liking the video on YouTube, sharing the broadcast on Facebook, and just simply commenting uh, with your city and state, you are helping us reach more people and helping us to get across more people's news feeds. So if you can go ahead and do that, go ahead and uh, share the broadcast, like this video, and simply just comment below with the city and state that you are watching from. That would be a very big help to us. Now, today I wanted to take a few moments of your time and I just simply wanted to concentrate uh, in one verse in particular, but I'm going to read here a few verses for you. I'm going to be reading out of Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, and I'm going to read verses 17 until the end of that chapter, which is verse 20. So if you have your Bibles and you want to crack it open and follow along with me, or on a portable device that is near you that you're not using to watch this live stream, go ahead. You can open up to Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, verses 17 through verse 20. And I'll be reading out of the New Living Translation. Listen to what uh, the Bible has to say here. Verse 17 and 18 are the words of Jesus. Jesus is speaking to his disciples, and this is what he says. He says, These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will, number one, cast out demons in my name, They will speak in new languages. Verse 18, they will be able to handle snakes with safety. And if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. Verse 19 says, when the Lord Jesus had finished talking with them, he was taken up into heaven and sat down in a place of honor at God's right hand. Now listen to verse 20. And these disciples went everywhere and preached, and the Lord worked through them, confirming what they said by many miraculous signs. And today, I simply want to speak on the subject that God confirms His Word. Listen, one of the things that never ceases to amaze me is when miracles take place. Now, I don't know about you, but there's a joy that comes over me when I see the power of God touch people's lives in turn their situations around. Over the years, I've I've seen multiplied healings and I've witnessed notable miracles happen right before my very eyes. Now, maybe it's just me, but I just don't understand how people can get up and preach with no desire for the gifts to flow, with no desire for the supernatural to take place. Or I don't know how people can get up and preach and not even give the Holy Spirit an opportunity to do what he wants to do in the service. You see, my line of thinking is what's the point of preaching if we don't give the Holy Spirit an opportunity to confirm the Word of God? You see, this this scripture or the scriptures show us that preaching is the means to miracles manifesting in the, in the world. You know, to the natural mind, that may sound ridiculous, but that's God's way. The Bible says that He chose the foolishness of preaching to win the lost and to release miracles. Preaching the Word is what compels God to move uh, in people's lives. You know, I like to say it like this. Preaching provokes God to make the impossible possible. You see, I remember a time when I was in Toronto preaching on the power of God to heal and to perform miracles when a young woman came up to me at the end of the service and said that while the word was being preached, now listen, listen to the power that's in the word of God. She said, while the word was being preached, She said the cyst that was right behind her knee completely disappeared. Listen, she didn't say that the cyst had shrunk, but she said that it had completely disappeared. Now, that's the power of God at work when the word of God is being preached. Listen, God's word has the power to destroy every manner of sickness, disease, and pain. And even as we speak right now on this subject, I believe the word of God is can be released here in Maine, and it can come to wherever you may be tonight and make you whole. Why? The psalmist said in Psalms 107 verse 20, he says, He sent His Word and healed them. Listen, 
Not that I have anything against doctors this evening, but unlike doctors, the word of God is not limited by time and distance. But if someone will be bold enough to pray healing and speak it, I believe our God is big enough to confirm that word. You see, we've taught for so long that miracles just happen. But can I just say something to you? Miracles don't just happen. Miracles happen because of two things. Number one, the preached word of God. And number two, expectation on the on behalf of the listener. You see, miracles happen because someone placed a demand and put pressure on the word of God. I was at a church the other day, well, a few weeks ago, where they were singing a song, and the words to that song were along the lines of miracles just happening, as if miracles were just some accident or coincidence. And sometimes people sing songs like that. Why? Because they don't know any better or they haven't been taught correctly. But tonight I'm teaching you that miracles don't just happen. According to God's word, miracles are pursued and miracles are provoked in, uh, into manifestation. You see, the best Bible def or the best definition for miracles that I have ever heard is this. Miracles are the deliberate acts of God in response to the dynamic faith of men. What this is saying is that miracles are released when you release your faith for them. Now, in order to release your faith, you have to have faith. And in order to have faith, the word of God must come into you and it must come alive in you because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You see, God's word not only confirms his word with signs and wonders, but God's word also imparts faith to the listener so that you can have faith for the impossible. Now, like I was saying before I, I went off on a little rabbit trail, preaching is the means to releasing miracles, but you also have to couple it with expectation. You see, when I get up behind the pulpit and before people, I expect what I preach uh, about to happen because Mark, Mark 16 says it like this, that he confirms his word with signs and wonders. So if there are no signs and wonders happening after the preaching of the word of God, that could be a good indicator that there is no word and no expectation. You see, expectation plays a big part in a person receiving the miracle. Why? Because honestly, you cannot receive what you don't expect to receive from God. I was at a church recently where cataracts instantly fell from a woman's eyes. And her testimony was this. I just knew God was going to do something for me this morning. She said, I expected, as I walked into the sanctuary, I expected to receive from God. And that's why I believe it's important that we always go to church with expectation because God will only do what you believe him to do. You see, a lot of times in modern day Christianity, many have strayed away from preaching the word of God. And they get their sermons from the newest novel or the newest movie so that they could be relevant with young people. I've, I've heard professors in Bible college say that. Well, you know, sometimes we got to preach out of a novel or we got to preach out of, a, out of a movie so that we can be relevant with the young people. But listen, my friend, it doesn't matter how old you are. The Holy Spirit is always relevant to every person at every stage of life, whether you're eight years old or whether you're 98 years old. The Holy Spirit is relevant to every individual. You know, I remember one time in Bible college, there was a professor who made the statement that he needed to go watch the movie The Matrix because he was preaching on Sunday. And when he was asked what The Matrix and preaching had to do with one another, he said that he was getting his sermon from the movie. Now, call me a little old-fashioned, but I still believe there's something that you can find in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to preach about. And if I could be honest with you, all this professor was getting was a religious sermon. And there's a big difference between a religious sermon and a word from God. A religious sermon will keep you bound and keep you depressed. But a word from God will destroy every chain of sickness, every chain of sin and disease and anxiety and fear off of your life. Listen, we don't have need for a three-point religious message that only gives the half-hearted believer what he wants to hear. I'd rather listen to a valedictorian speech at a middle school graduation than listen to a religious message that has no hope and power and will bring no change 
to a person's life. What we have need of in 2021 is Holy Ghost preaching that will pierce through every work of the devil and bring all of his plans to nothing in Jesus' my name. Listen, people like you that are watching right now, some of you may be going through life and you may be encountering real issues, real battles, real struggles. And instead of getting into the presence of God for a word that can change somebody's life, many people, so-called ministers, would rather preach a message that makes them sound and look relevant. So that is why I'm going to encourage you as an individual to begin doing two things tonight. Number one, whatever your situation may be, search the scriptures out that have to do with your situation, and then begin to meditate on those scriptures and begin to speak those scriptures over your life. Begin to make declarations because as you do, faith is coming into you, and with your confession, you are releasing faith and giving God something to work with this evening. You see, this method is simply the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 11, in action. For the Bible says, God's word never returns back void but it always produces what it is sent out to do. There was a woman by the name of Gloria Copeland. She said it like this, God's words come out of his mouth. Then you take them out of his word, the Bible, and you put those words into your heart. Then you speak those very words out of your mouth back to him. And when those words go back to him, filled with faith, They produce the thing they were sent out to accomplish. They produce the impossible. You see, as you learn to speak God's word, God will confirm that very word in your life. And secondly, expect God to do it. See, the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he would change his mind. So whatever it is that you're believing God for, find it in the scriptures. Declare it over your life. And then expect God to bring it to pass. Because if there is one thing about God, it's this. His arm is not too short that he cannot save you. And failure is not in his character. So as you come to him in expectation, you can be guaranteed that God will do what he has promised to do. And if he did it for others, then I've got good news. Then God will do it for you in Jesus' mighty name. Listen, my friend, I hope this has blessed you today. And that this word will cause you to be more committed to the scriptures as you experience God each day confirming his word over your life in Jesus' mighty name. Now, before you click off this broadcast, stay tuned because I have one more special message for you. God bless you, and I love you. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on this broadcast. I pray what you just watched and listened to was a blessing to you and that faith came alive on the inside of you. But before we let you go tonight, we always like to give people an opportunity to sow in response to the word they receive. Now, for those of you who partner with this ministry on a monthly basis, I just want to start off by personally thanking you and saying that I'm extremely grateful for your generosity as you partner with us to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. And for those of you who are watching tonight and have not yet taken that step to partner with us, would you consider partnering with us so together we can impact this world with the life-changing message of the gospel? You see, I believe according to the word, one of the ways that God releases his financial provision is through the generosity of his people. As children of God, I don't believe that we should go to the world for help, but I believe in God's house, amongst God's people, There is more than enough to carry out his work without any hiccups in life. I know what God's called me to do, but I also know I cannot do it on my own. I believe that, number one, that the Holy Spirit will guide me in every decision in the assignment he has for me, and his work will be completed one way or the other. Number two, I also believe the Holy Spirit will speak to the hearts of men and women like you who are watching tonight who have a burden for souls and a desire for God to move upon this land in this final hour of time. I have personally set my faith for 100 individuals, businesses, or organizations to partner with us financially so that we can make a great impact for the kingdom of God before it is eternally late for some people. So today, I'm asking you, 
would you consider partnering with us monthly? Or if you can't do monthly, would you consider sowing a one-time generous seed to help push the gospel to the ends of the earth? You see, your giving today will put food on the table every day for children who would have normally gone without food. But because of your generosity, tomorrow morning, these children can be well fed. Your giving also helps us with our international crusades where many come to know Christ as Lord and Savior of their life. And thirdly, your giving also helps us reach young women who've been stuck in the human trafficking industry to help them escape that lifestyle and get them cleaned up so that they could find Jesus and purpose for their life. You see, today we can make a decision through our giving that will cause the blessing of God to be with us in every season of life. I personally believe that one of the greatest challenges that people will have to overcome in life is whether or not to put their trust in God or to put their trust in the riches of this world. And honestly, I believe many times people have missed out on what God has for them because they have chosen the latter of the two. But tonight, I wanted to encourage you, my friend. When you apply God's principle to your life, and when you are generous in your giving to further the kingdom of God, God, number one, takes notice of your generosity. And number two, God takes notice of your heart, and he will never allow you to outgive him. You see, in your eyes, you may not think what you can do is big. But whether it be big or small, what matters is your obedience to the voice of the Holy Spirit. So as you ask the Lord tonight what he would have you do, I want to thank you in advance for partnering with our ministry as we impact this world together with the message of the gospel that will transform lives for all eternity in Jesus' mighty name.